In glass working, the shaping follows the charging. Shaping processes to fabricate the glass products can be grouped into three categories. The first one is the extruded processes for piecewear. The second process is for the continuous processes for making the flat glasses and tubing. The third category is fiber making processes to produce the fibers for the insulation and for the fiber optics. Mentioned methods of the hand working in glass, including the glass blowing. Handicraft methods are still used today for making glassware items of high values in small quantities. However, most modern glass shaping processes are highly machinized technologies for using the discrete pieces such as jars, bottles, and light bulbs in high quantities. There are several piecewear shaping processes, including the spinning, which is similar to the centrifugal casting of the metals, the pressing, which is a massive production of flat products such as dishes and DV2 face plates. The press and blow is used for production of the wide mouth containers such as the jars, while the blow and the blow production of the smaller mouth containers such as the beverage bottles and the incident light bulbs. Finally, the casting is used for large items such as the astronomical lenses that must be cooled slowly to avoid the cracking. Lens spinning is a similar to centrifugal casting of the metals and also known by that name in the glass working. This process is used to produce a film-shaped components such as the back sections of the cathode ray tubes for the televisions and computer monitors. The process starts with a gob of molten glass is dropped into a conical mold made of steel. The mold is rotated so that a centrifugal forces causes the glass to flow upward and separate itself into the mold surface. The face plate is later assembled into the funnel using a ceiling glass of the low melting point. The pressing is a widely used process for the mass producing glass pieces such as the dishes, bakeware, headlight lenses, TV tube face plates, and similar items that are relatively flat. The glass gob is fed into the mold, pressing into the shape by plunger, and the plunger is retracted and the finished product is removed. The larger quantities of the most pressed products justify the high level of automation in this production sequence. In the blowing processes, Several shaping sequences include the blowing as one or more of the steps. Instead of the manual operation, the blowing is performed on highly automated equipment. The two sequences we described here are the press and blow and the blow and the blow methods. As the name indicates, the press and flow methods is a pressing operation followed by the blowing operation. So first, the molten gob is fed into the mold cavity, pressing to form the operation. The operation is transferred to the blow mold and the blown to a final shape. The 
procedure is suited for the production of the wide mouth containers. Acetate mold is used for the blowing operation for a part removal. The blow and the blow method is used to produce a smaller mouth bottles. The sequence is similar to the preceding, except that two or more blowing operations are used rather than the pressing and blowing. In the first step, the gob is going to be fed into the mold cavity. The second step, the mold is covered. Then, a first blow step happening in stage number three. Step number four, a partially formed piece is repositioned in the second blow mold. And finally, the blown to the final shape. Reheating is sometimes required between the blowing steps. Duplicating and duplicate the molds are sometimes used along with the matching gulp feeder to increase the production rates. In glass casting, the molten glass is sufficiently fluid to be poured into the mold to make the massive objects such as the astronomical lenses and mirrors. After cooling and solidifying, the piece must be finished by lapping and polishing. Casting is not often used except for the special jobs. Small lenses are usually made by the pressing operation. Processes for producing a flat glass, such as a sheet and plate glass, can be done either by the rolling of the flat plate glasses or flawed processes for producing the sheet glass. Flat plate glass can be produced by rolling. Starting a glass in a suitably plastic condition from the furnace is squeezed through opposing rolls whose separation determines the thickness of the sheet. The rolling operation is usually set up so that the flat glass is moved directly into the annealing furnaces. Through the glass sheet must later be crowned and polished for the parallelism and the smoothness. The process was developed back in the late 1950s. In the flat process, the glass flows directly from the melting furnace onto a surface of molten tin path. The highly fluid glass spread evenly across the molten tin surface, achieving a uniform thickness and the smoothness. After moving into a cooler region of the path, the glass is hardened and travels through an annealing furnace, after which it is cut to size. Its advantage over the other methods such as the rolling is that the obtained smoothness surfaces that need no subsequent finishing operations. Glass tubing is manufactured by a drawing process known as the Danner process. The molten glass flows around the rotating hollow mandrel through which the air is blown while the glass is being drawn. The air temperature and its volumetric rate, as well as the drawing velocity, would determine the diameter 
and the wall thickness of the tubular cross section. Unit hardening. The glass tube is supported by a series of rollers extended about 30 meters beyond the mandrel. The continuous tubing is then cut into a standard length. Tubular glass products include the laboratory glassware, the fluorescent light tubes, and thermometers. Glass fiber products fall into two categories with different production methods for each the fibrous glass for the thermal insulation and the air filtration, in which the fibers are going to be in random wool like conditions produced by the centrifugal spraying. The other type is the long continuous filaments, which are suitable for the fiber reinforced plastics yarns, fabrics, and the fiber optics, and it's produced by the drawing operation. In the drawing of the continuous glass fiber, a continuous glass fiber of the small diameter are produced by pulling the strand of the molten glass through a small orifices in a heated plate made of the platinum alloy. A typical process for making the glass wall, a molten glass flows into a rotating bowel with many small orifices around its periphery. The centrifugal force causes the glass to flow through the holes become fibrous mass, suitable for the thermal and acoustical insulation.